Chapter 6, Section 1, the objectives are, we're going to look at an overview of each type of bond, ionic, covalent, and metallic. We're also going to describe the properties of metallic bonds. We're going to use electronegativities to distinguish between an ionic, polar covalent, or non-polar covalent bond. And then we're going to review using the periodic table to identify a number of valence electrons and how to draw a Lewis dot structure. So, Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. Recall that on your periodic table, depending on the group number, is going to tell you how many valence an atom has. Group 1 has 1 valence, group 2 has 2, group 3 has 3, and so forth. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, except for helium, of course. The electronegativity is also a pattern that we're going to have to use again this chapter. Recall that it's the ability to attract electrons. And the element with the highest electronegativity is going to be fluorine with an electronegativity equal to 4.0. EN stands for electronegativity. Also recall that the noble gases have no electronegativity, EN equals 0, because they have no need to attract electrons. They already have their full octet. So a chemical bond is an attraction of valence electrons between different atoms which causes them to bind. The key here is valence electrons. Only the electrons on the outer energy level are involved in bonding, not the internal electrons. So that's why valence is so important in this chapter. There are two main types of chemical bonds. There's a covalent bond, which is a sharing of electrons. Notice in the diagram below, we have two atoms where their electron clouds overlap each other. And so they're sharing the electrons in the overlap of the clouds. On the right side, we have an ionic bond, which is the result of a transfer of electrons, which is very different. The left element is sodium. The element on the right is chlorine. Sodium wants to take its one valence and literally transfer, give it away to the chlorine. So sodium is going to lose that one valence and get a plus one charge. Chlorine is going to gain that one electron to get a minus one charge. And now both of these atoms have their octet of eight valence. And then they're going to be held together by something known as electrostatic attraction, which we'll discuss more in the coming sections. One more type of bond is the metallic bond. And after this section, we won't really discuss it anymore because it's not very common in bonding. Metallic bonds result in an attraction between metal atoms. You get what's called a sea of electrons. Metallic bonds are what are responsible for the following properties. The good conductivity of heat and electricity of metals, the fact that they are malleable and ductile, can be hammered into a sheet or made into a wire, and the fact that they're so shiny, they have a large range of light absorption. These are all thanks to that sea of electrons. So what causes the sea of electrons? It's caused by detached electrons because metals want to lose their electrons to become stable. Metals will go ahead and detach their valence electrons, causing them to be delocalized, also known as homeless. And so the electrons are just roaming around in the metals while the metal nuclei are left positive, which is what gives them their stability. Metallic bond strength increases as you go down a group on the periodic table, and it increases as you go from the left to the right on the periodic table. So we're going to learn now how to use electronegativity, remember that's represented EN, to determine what type of bond we're dealing with. Realize that bonding is not always purely one or the other. In other words, it's not just ionic and it's not just covalent. Ionic, if you recall, means that electrons get transferred. Covalent, which is gonna be from here to here, is where electrons are shared. If it's polar covalent, they are unequally shared. And if it's non-polar covalent, then they are equally shared. And so we have to look at what the difference is between electronegativities to determine whether or not it falls in the category of ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent. So for example, here we have oxygen versus hydrogen. And oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5.
Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. If I subtract them, I get an electronegativity difference of 1.4. And if you'll notice, 1.4 falls in the polar covalent range between 0.3 and 2.0. And so I would call this a polar covalent bond. All that means is the electrons are being shared unequally between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Realize that oxygen, let's look at the next page, oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen is going to be what's called the electron hog, where it has more pull on the electrons because it's more electronegative. And so therefore, the more always the more negative element is always going to be the higher electronegative element. So how are you going to determine bond type with electronegativities? Here's how we do it. First, you're going to subtract the electronegativities of one of each element. We're just trying to determine how are the electrons being shared or transferred in one bond between two atoms. We're going to use the chart of electronegativity values. And in the classroom, you have a chart on the back of your periodic table that gives you these values. So let's look at number one, the carbon dioxide. We want to compare carbon to oxygen. So it's going to be 2.5, according to my chart, minus 3.5. And so this gives me a difference in electronegativity of 1.0. If we look at our chart, this falls in the polar covalent range. And so I would label this as polar covalent. Magnesium and chloride, we're going to compare magnesium is 1.2 minus chloride, which is 3.0. We're just dealing in the difference, so you can deal in absolute value. It doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive number. My change in electronegativity is 1.8. Notice that 1.8, again, falls in the polar covalent range. Recall that these two compounds, CO2 and MgCl2, are unequally sharing their electrons and the more electronegative element has the stronger pull. So in the case of CO2, oxygen has a stronger pull on the electrons, and MgCl2, the chloride, has the stronger pull on the electrons. One more example, we have N2, and what we're doing is comparing nitrogen bonded to another nitrogen. So that's gonna be 3.0 minus 3.0. And this gives us an electronegativity difference equal to zero, which you'll notice is here in the nonpolar covalent range. This means that the nitrogens are equally sharing their electrons. And if you'll look at the diagram next to nonpolar covalent, the electron cloud is evenly distributed over the two atoms.